It is a tragedy, but sometimes a tiefling is born without horns. In such cases, it is possible to create prosthetics for the tiefling, so they don't feel like they don't fit into their normal place in society. This figure was such a one, and I felt it was my duty as painter and crafter to rectify the situation. She comes from a package of two miniatures called Isobel and Rufus. I can only assume her name is Rufus because the dog is so obviously an Isobel. My first attempt at placing prosthetic horns on Rufus met with failure, as you may be able to tell from the white marks on this figure. I decided that an unfortunately invasive but necessary procedure of a double trepanning would allow me to implant two steel posts that would hold the horns in place. After boring the holes, I used super glue to put two pins into Rufus's head. Unfortunately, this made her look like Insect Girl, but two quick snips and that situation was rectified. Many tools are available for manipulating two-part epoxy putty like green stuff. For this kind of prosthetic horn, tools beyond your own hands are unnecessary. After mixing the two parts of the putty sufficiently, a simple twisting motion with a gentle pull will create a tapering horn with a spiral pattern. If you are going to touch this kind of putty with your hands, I recommend wetting your hands with water first so that it doesn't stick to them. Because natural horns have reverse chirality on either side of the head, it is important when making your prosthetics that you twist the two horns in opposite directions with your hands as you are drawing them out. It is tempting to use the two ends that pull apart when you are making a single horn to make instead two horns. Do not be so tempted, as your horns will not look natural. the horns as carefully as you can over the metal studs. Once your horns are both in place, the remainder of the horn shaping will be done through a precise procedure I like to call fiddling. Fiddle until both horns are satisfactory. It may be necessary to remove one of the horns if you cannot fiddle it into the correct shape. For this figure, I had to remove and remake the right hand horn. Be sure, as you are remaking any horn, that you pay attention to the chirality or the direction of the spiral of the original horn so that you can match it. Once you have fiddled with the horn sufficiently, leave the figure and walk away. Under no circumstances should you touch the figure again until the putty has cured. Ignore all pleas for just one more adjustment or I don't think this one is quite straight anymore. Hi, how's it going, Rufus? Say, you look different. <gasps> Did you get a haircut? Tell me, what's different? Go away, dog. 
Fine then, be that way. Now with horn putty fully cured, it is time to prime and paint the base coat on your horns. I chose the same color base coat for the horns on this figure as for the skin and hair, as I want the natural pigmentation to have some influence on the final color. Painting the hair on this figure got a lot of little spots and dots of paint on the horns, and so I painted the horns last. Hoping for a natural look for these prosthetics, I painted them in the same manner that I paint bone, with a mixture of mostly white with a little bit of yellow and brown. I then gave them a careful wash with Agrax Earthshade. The gloss finish of the Agrax Earthshade will give a nice shine to the horns and add some contrast with the rest of the paint, which is matte. After application of the Agrax Earthshade, I added a little bit more of the bone color to highlight areas that would be hit most directly by sunlight from above. Now we see Rufus, transformed into her new persona, Pyra. The confidence imparted by these life-altering prosthetics allowed Pyra to rise to prominence among the bards of the Sword Coast and to attain the status of exalted leader of the Knights of Honesty. But that is a story for another time. If you enjoyed this episode of the Knights of Honesty, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more episodes of the Knights of Honesty, or other episodes of painting and crafting for Dungeons and & Dragons and other tabletop games, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and as always, thank you for your valor. Thank you.